this tutorial is kind of an add-on to the one I did on the clone stamp tool because I failed to show how you can remove glare from eyeglasses uh, using this tool. So this will be a focus uh, on that particular topic. And uh, so we need to open the software that we're going to be using. And again, it will work equally well in Photoshop CC or in Photoshop Elements. And um, I've given you a folder of images to go with this week's instruction. So if you will go to File, Open, and navigate to the remote lesson on the healing brushes, and you will notice a Bob Portrait Glare on Glasses 2. If you'll grab that one and open it into your workspace. Need this. Okay. All right. Uh, this is an example that uh, can easily be fixed with a clone stamp tool. I wanted to mention that um, occasionally I get a glare that's in one eyeball right on the eye. And one way to fix that in many situations is to clone the other eyeball over it. Now, you don't have to clone everything else beside the eyeball. You can carefully work around the rest and repair. But I have had success where the whole, the actual ball of the eye, uh, and sometimes it's one that, because of the way the head was turned, one glass gets that. You can't do much if you have two. But if you have one, you can use the other eye to help uh, replace that part. But our problem is clearly um, an area that is not contained in the main part of the uh, eye. And so uh, to do this, we always use a blank layer above the background. Uh, and, and if people are in elements, I made the mistake of not opening the photo bin before I opened the image. So a command zero or control zero pops the picture back into the area where pictures belong. So I'm going to go up here and add that a new layer and on top of the one. And uh, I will go and pick up the clone stamp tool. And by now, you probably know where that's found. And I'm going to look and be sure I'm sampling all layers. And it's very important that we not have the aligned check because I have a very limited space from which I can pick up pixels to put over that glare. And consequently, I want to keep picking them up from the same spot. I don't want it to follow me as I move. And of course, I want to zoom in. So I, I believe when I worked on this, it's got enough resolution that we can bring it up to 100% and then spread this out and move it till it's in the middle. And uh, at that point, you will see detail better. So it really helps. Uh, if you've done my other one where we talked about uh, getting rid of the shadow and wrinkles, I hadn't thought of it, but you'll notice in the, below his eyes he has bags and there's a shadow created. You can use the same technique that we did on wrinkles and minimize that line. Remember, we're not trying to totally get rid of it, but you want to get it, knock it down so you don't have that clear shadow showing. So our first focus is on the glare on the glasses. So I have my, I have to go back and pick up the clone stamp tool and I'm going to size it and I want to know I'm going to pick up from this area and paste over here and I don't want to be hitting the outside of that area so I'm going to cut a little bit smaller and again just like the healing brush and the other you do have to look carefully to see where you're picking it up when you drag. So with my alter option key click I'm picking up the pixels. I'm moving over here, and you can see that what you've picked up is showing in that overlay. It's just simply plain things. Look at the X. You see where X marks? That means that if I keep in the good area, I can drag a little. But I don't risk running into uh, an area that was not corrected. Because if I do, I have to go back and undo. Now, when I, pr I released my mouse button, now when I click it again, look where the plus is. It's back where it started. So I've got some other good area. And I lift again. And I come up here along the top of that part. And now I'm going to worry about that remaining part later. That's a rim. And we'll repair the rim later. Right now, I if I think that I'm going to be doing some opacity adjustment, then I would use a separate layer for the other eye. 
but this is not a correction that's going to undergo opacity adjustment. I don't want the glare back. So I can do both eyes on one layer. I come over here, I pick an area, and I realize that if I go to the right directly, this is what I'll be picking up. So if you go Option, click, come over here, do a little work, and then before you have trouble, lift, and it'll go back to where it started. And when I get up close to the rim, I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to pick up the pixels, Alt or Option, click, and then I'm going to come up close to the rim and catch the rest of that part. Now while I'm here, I whatever caused this dark area in his eye, I might as well get rid of it while I'm working. So I'm going to come over to this side and paste it over that particular area. So again, I'm leaving it pretty small for this one, and I'm going to come along and just minimize that a little. And I'm not going to worry about totally. You can see this was a gentleman in his 90s, a uh, cousin of mine who's no longer living. But, you know, he had one eye smaller and a very, very different. But I did want to get rid of the, the nuisance coming from the uh, glare on the glasses. I'm going to do a little touch up over here. Be sure I'm not left with any glare. Now, if you're fussy, uh, you can go and cut the opacity of your brush, your clone brush, down and partially cover this gray matter. Just to show you how I would do it. I would come down to opacity, which was at 100%. I'll bring it down to 50. I'll now pick up the pixels here. And when I put them down over this area, they will reduce that, but not totally get rid of it. So you can, um, there's quite often times where you just want to minimize and not get rid of, so you can lower the opacity. And now, when I do this, I'm going to look now at the frames. They will pick up glare too. And you all want my opacity to go back to 100%. And I'm going to pick up a very careful small brush, a rim, and paste it over the glare. So if you start over here, we have some glare on that rim. I'm going to pick it up here. Now I don't have much room to drag, so I'm going to go click. Now you see the overlay shows you that you've lined up the rim and then I go a little distance and I lift it. And then if I do it again, the overlay is still there and it goes back to the original spot. And I like to do this in very small amounts. And again, you're not necessarily having to be perfect. The same eye has a bright spot on the rim down here. So pick up, this is almost just clicking. Pick it up there. Line up the rim over that spot so you're thinking you're over it and give one click. And I took care of that. And up here, again, I'm going to pick up the rim here. I'm going to look that I've lined it up over that glare. And I'm going to do little separate drags because I'm on a curve. And if I made a mess, and I think I did, two undos, and I can try to do it better. So don't be surprised if you at times redo something. Lining that up helps. Okay, and I think there's a little brightness here on under, uh, under the glasses. I'll come back and, and get rid of that part that's neutral. And while I was there, I noticed that the, the light hitting the skin on the outside of that eye over here, for whatever reason, uh, doesn't look normal. And I think it's partly a reflection of his white hair. Well, whatever it is, I can fix that. I'll come back up here, make my brush a little bigger, and I'm going to come along and come over here and do just a little bit, do a little bit. And remember, if it doesn't work, you undo it. And I'm watching my plus sign. I don't want it to leave the useful area. I have to be careful. If I change my direction and I go down, it's going to move down. And so I'm coming along and seeing how much I can do to that area. Now, I'm thinking right now that I could have put this on a fresh layer so that if it looked too extreme, I could lower the opacity. And uh, that would have been better. You see here, I think it's a little too obvious. It's, but it's on the layer with all my other work. So I really would have to undo that. So if I simply... Uh, do some uh, undo on the clone stamp tool till I 
get back as far as I need to go to get rid of that work. If I go too far, I come back one step. And now I'm going to make a new layer. And now when I do that, if I think it is overdone, I can reduce the opacity. It's an important thing to realize. It's a great tool. So I have to go back. I have the clone stamp tool. And I think it could be a step larger. I'm going to pick it up here where it seems to be neutral. And I'm going to put it down over here. And I'm going to do it. I won't do this whole thing for you. You can play with it if you're trying to get more practice. And then if I think it's too obvious, I come up to the opacity slider and I reduce it. Can you see that? By reducing it, it blends in better. So be aware that there are lots of ways of approaching. I missed the eyepiece over the nose piece on his glasses, and that was on the layer below. So I'm coming on down on that layer, and I have my clone stamp at 100%, and it's too big. So I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to pick it up here, and then I'm going to try to line it up as best I can and got rid of that. So, you know, I one of the things you have to do uh, in working with cloning or healing, you have to be willing to get some practice to become better at it. Now, uh, when I did this, I suddenly looked up and remembered that there is a brown spot above his eyebrow. And that might be something I'd like to clear up. And I'm thinking that, you know, I might do that on the layer where I have opacity possibilities in reducing. So I'm just going to work on that layer instead. I'm going to have my clone stamp tool bigger. You see it still it picks up, but I'm going to pick up a new area. It doesn't have that black rim. So click, pick up, come over here. Be careful you don't go too far. You could always lift the mouse and pick it up. And at that point, I can leave it as is. It's already been reduced to 75% because that's what I did in the other. And that works fine for me. And while you're here, you'll find all kinds of other things. Once you know how to work with things, uh, one of the things I would often do on this face is I would take a hue and saturation layer and lower the red. He has a little too much red on the nose and cheeks. And so I'll come back to the bottom layer and I'll open a hue and saturation layer. I'll go and pick the channel for red. I'll take the eyedropper and I'll sample the cheeks where it's red. And that changed the position of the tone. And now I'll come and I will go to the saturation and just a little. I didn't want to do a lot, but I wanted to reduce it a little. And of course, once you get in, you'll find other things like there's a scar on his nose. Well, we could get rid of that. Let's go back to the one where the opacity is not lowered. That's this one layer. And I'm going to get my clone stamp tool. And I'm going to see that it's at 100% because it's basically I want to move what's up there below. So I pick it up above, I come down here, and I simply go like that, and you're rid of that. So there are lots of things. This face could have a lot more work, but I just wanted you to basically see how you could get rid of glare. And, you know, there's a glare I didn't get rid of here, and I don't want to leave this lesson without doing that. So I'm going to pick up this and come over here. Yeah. So... And then, of course, when you work on anything like this and you've done this much work, be sure you save this as a PSD document and keep all your layers. So if you open it another day and you discover you forgot something, you, you're right there. If you suddenly say something needs to have its opacity lowered, you can still do it. If you need to add something, you can do it. So uh, while I'm working, I keep my work as a PSD file. And then when it's ready to be sent out somewhere, I can merge those layers when I know that they don't need further work. So I hope that you might find this useful in uh, working with uh, uh, portraits that are casual. You know, um, I don't con I'm not a person who has my own... Uh, room for working on it with special lights. So when I do any, they're pretty straightforward on lighting. And uh, it's good to have techniques that will help you uh, fix that. You know, and I, I guess I can't leave you without that. See the spot in the bottom of his eye here? I can show you how to get rid of that. What you do is you clone, 
and you're cloning at 100%, and you size this to be the size that is going to include both the eyelid and the iris. And I come over here, and when I do op alter option and click, I will have a place in there where the dark occurs. And if I line that up and click, I remove that one spot. So it's really worthwhile developing a little skill with this. Uh, you'll find it helps a lot on family pictures where, you know, I'm not changing that whole person. I'm just easing it so it makes a more permanent and enjoyable image uh, to keep. So I hope you will find this, and this will eventually end up in my clone stamp uh, tutorial set that I'm working on, and it will go along in there.